Hi, my name is Vincent Donders and we are here for the one-on-one -on -one with Victor for the Ecabo site and we're in the drizzly city of Leiden, the beautiful city though, to do the interview where the city where I've been brought up, where I was born and where I've lived for all my life. So let's do the interview. Cool, nice. So Leiden is very beautiful. I've been here, I think twice. Okay. And uh, whenever I come, I get inspired to do new things, think of new ideas and uh, things like that. That's good, I love it as well. I, I love living here. Okay, cool. So, uh, thank you for agreeing to do this. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you're a co-writer of Ecabo and you have contributed greatly to it. So, uh, thank you so much, man. Thank you for uh, le letting me be a part of it. Cool. Let's do this, man. Let's do this, yes. All right. So, uh, my first question to you. What makes you happy? What makes me happy is to make other people happy and to try to help other people in life. But also little things such as the smile of a child brings me in a really good mood as well okay so we were classmates in oh there's someone coming behind us mm -hmm. yeah so uh hi hi so uh we were classmates in delft we studied aeronautical engineering together yes but we were. so that means you're uh, you're an engineer you have your degree I have my degree in aeronautical engineering. I don't work in the engineering field anymore though. Yeah. I've never worked in the engineering field because I studied another study uh, which is uh, physics teaching in Utrecht. And uh, yeah, I seem to like that a bit more. So uh, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, but why do you do that? I mean, you have your degree, you can be an engineer, but why do physics teaching? That's true. Uh, after my first year in Delft aeronautical studying aeronautical engineering, I noticed I wouldn't be an engineer or it wasn't for me, uh, it wasn't the field for me to work in. So I always liked bringing over knowledge to other people and interest in things I was passionate about, such as physics. Also, I love the age group from 12 to 18, the high school children, and especially bringing over knowledge in that age range. So I thought, well, let's combine that and become a teacher. So now I'm studying to become a teacher in high school. Look, man, super look. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Walking on my Dutch, man. It's good, it's, it's becoming really good. So, uh, you believe in God? No, not fully. Okay, well, why is that? And if you don't, what do you believe in? Well, I don't know why I don't believe in God. I mean, maybe it will come in the future that I will start to believe in God, but I do believe in other things, uh, such as music and people that I love and art. Um, and I... I not necessarily believe in things that are true, but I I believe in things that are that are good. For instance, I don't believe in war. Well, it's definitely true, uh, but I rather believe in in love. For instance, it's not always true, but it is it is good. So I I believe in things that are good. Okay. Well, side note: you're looking so good, man. You're looking dapper. Thank you very much. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Uh, what's your spiritual animal? My spiritual animal is a, a meerkat. It's also my favorite animal. I, 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 I notice that there are a lot of uh, characteristics that we that I share with a meerkat. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 definitely my spiritual animal. Move a bit. You're keeping into someone's house. <laughs> you don't want to get a fine or something like that. No, it's all right. Yeah. So, um, um, do you think you're an earth for a reason, and uh, what motivates you? Well, sometimes I feel that my role in life is to make other people happy and okay. try to make the lives of other people better. Okay. Uh, of course, you cannot always do that. So also when that's not possible, I work um, on my ego sort of. You could say that things that are important to me is to develop myself mm -hmm. and develop the world uh, I'm living in and the lives of other people. Also, I try to take in the beauty of life in art, in music, in film, uh, in food, in other people, in dance. Um, and from time to time, it's also important to have fun, 
try not to forget that. So um, I think those are the, the three things together with trying to make other people happy uh, that are the reasons I'm on Earth for. Nice, nice <laughs> um, Well, you're a very young, handsome man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what did you want you're to making me blush. <laughs> what did you want to be as a child? I wanted to be in forensics, actually. I wanted to be a crime scene investigator. I think from the age of eight to, let's say, 12, mm -hmm. I was watching CSI, mm -hmm. which is a TV sh what, which was a TV show by then. Mm -hmm. And I just love you know, the people working in the lab and mixing chemicals together and working with DNA mm -hmm. and trying to match fingerprints of potential um, suspects. Yeah. So. Um, or potential killers mm -hmm. and you know you always hear this epic music and then they arrested the killer afterwards by saying cool sentences like we know that you did it so I thought that is something for me of course I found out later that um, it is convenient that you'll be able to see dead bodies if you want to do that job and that the music isn't always there and that the people that work in the lab are not the ones that arrest the killer as well. So I thought at the end, maybe it isn't for me. And uh, anyway, later I changed my dream job from forensics to working for Ferrari, the, the, the auto brand, you could say, yeah, the car brand. Gear and stuff like that. I do still have, yeah. I'm not a big fan anymore, but I, yeah, I was a big fan once and I wanted to be for the, uh, work for them in the aerodynamics department of the Formula One cars. Okay. Cool. Cool. My, my favorite quote, wow. I don't know one favorite quote, but my favorite poem is by Jim Morrison. And one of the things he says in that, po uh, in that poem that I really like is death makes angels of us all and gives us wings where we had shoulders smooth as raven's claws. So I really like that one. Can you say that again? I can. <laughs> death makes angels of us all and gives us wings where we had shoulders smooth as raven's claws. Okay. So I think that's a nice saying. Sophisticated. S definitely, yeah. It is, it really is, eh? I love it. Really amazing. Yes. I don't know why I haven't come here. Why I don't come here more often, but Well you're still young, you can always come here. Especially while I'm living here. Okay. Probably we have a meet up once in a while. We yes. definitely have, yeah. Okay. And uh, what is the one thing you would like to change in the world? Ooh. I would like the world to stop labeling and pigeonholing everything. Labeling is for things you can put in boxes or in folders and the world and its people is not such a place So mm -hmm. I would change that. Okay. What's your favorite language? English <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what's the language you wish to speak? Every language Yeah. Wow. And what's your least favorite language? I think my least favorite language doesn't exist because every language is a chance to to talk and possibly connect to a group of people that you wouldn't be able to before. So I don't have a least favorite language. Okay. Well, love means so much to me. I, I can experience love so intensely. And I think it's the reason I care so much for others as well. And not only for myself. Um, although I've learned to love myself in the last couple of years more and more, which I think is also important. But um, no, I think love is, is also, yeah, it, it's just so important for me. And I think it's the thing that I feel strongest connected to in, in life. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's what, definitely important. What book would you advise people to read and why? What book would I advise people to read? Mm, I would, I, I don't know. I'm not that big of a reader actually, but I think reading a book is not always an easy process mm -hmm. uh, for some so i would advise to hello. read hello i would okay. <laughs> thanks it's a we are doing an interview <laughs> yeah um, no 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 i'm trying to get to know him and uh what better way to do an interview do, yeah like do an interview <laughs> thanks
So I think it's important to read a book that you really like and if you have read two chapters and you don't like it, don't read the third chapter because there's probably a book from which you want to read all chapters. So read that book then. Okay. Well, I know you love music. That's I do. That's one thing that if you meet really Vincent do. Dundas, you know from the first talk with him, probably from five minutes, that he loves music. I do. Yes. What's your favorite artist? Oh, my favorite artist. I don't know. Maybe the Beatles in rock music, but I also love Mozart and Beethoven in classical music, and so many artists. Led Zeppelin, David Bowie is my hero. Uh, Pink Floyd, those kind of artists. Yeah. So you're you're more of an oldies guy. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Music uh, way above your age yeah uh, sometimes I hear that I should have been born in 30 years before okay. <laughs> well do you have a favorite song then? I do it's uh, echoes by Pink Floyd okay. Okay. nice nice do you have a line from the song Wow uh, overhead the albatross is hanging in the air is hanging motionless within the air and deep beneath the rolling waves of labyrinth in coral caves. Okay. That's, I think, the first sentence. Okay. But the song takes 23 minutes, so it's a long song. That's <laughs> a song, man. That's, uh, I don't know what to call it. 23 minutes. A lot of boats in Leiden as well on the yeah, canal. So. The, uh, lovely canal. Mm -hmm. A lot of students as well. Yeah. And 73% of those people, or of the people that live in Leiden, are women. So I'm... Not complaining about that as well. <laughs> I should, no, I, let me not say what I want to say. I want to say I should move to Leiden, but... Uh, you have a girlfriend. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> a lovely girlfriend. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, what's your favorite movie? Ooh, it's The Godfather. I don't know, one or two, but definitely The Godfather part one or two. Okay. Um, what's your favorite TV series? Mm, it's Mad Men. It, uh, it's just a series about the 60s and uh, businessmen or advertising men living in, in, well, in the 60s and the family situations by then and how life was by then. It's, and it's portrayed in such a detailed way. I, I, just, I just love it. And I would advise everyone to, to, to watch it. Maybe it's not a series that everyone would like, but I think it's very, very good. Are those the bells we hear? Yes, it's from the, I think it's 5.30, so uh, the clocks from the church is going to let people know that do not have a phone <laughs> or a watch, how late it is. Okay, nice, beautiful, beautiful. It is. Well, we uh, established the fact that you love music. Definitely, yes. And uh, do you play any instruments? I do, I play drums and guitar. And I love singing where no one in, nobody hears me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and sometimes I touch the keys of a piano, but not more than that. Okay, nice. Well, so what does music mean to you? Wow, Pff, I, I don't know if I can describe that. I think music is for me the most important not living thing. Um, it's my biggest friend's apart from my other friends uh, it has been so important to me especially in times I was lonely and lost and I got a lot it hit me with a lot of emotions such as sadness and happiness and um, yeah I'm just I'm just really happy I can enjoy enjoy music so much that I do it so uh, yeah no I, I, I it's, it's very important to me I think I'm I, I'm, I'm addicted to music. If I notice that when I don't listen to music for a day, that I get withdrawal symptoms, I can't concentrate, I feel I have depressed like feelings. So I really need to listen to music a lot. And it's, and it, yeah, so you could say it's pretty important to me. Okay. And um, well, you have experienced a lot of stuff in life, even at a very young age. I think you have a lot of uh, things to share. I think we all do, right? Yeah. <laughs> true, true, true. Um, 
is there any lesson that you would like to share from your life experience, from your very nice life experience? Oh, I would say that um, a lesson I would love to share is that although life is, spe is special, sometimes it's pretty normal as well. And sometimes I notice that people try to make every single moment of every day special and you should always be happy and everything should always be fun and I think that's not good because some moments are just not you know made to be fun or to be happy and if you try to be happy in those moments I think it's the sadness that will hit you even more and um, so yes and also you will see other people and in, in some moments you are jealous of what they have in life or how they live their life and some moments they are jealous of what you have in life and how you can live your life and I think happiness comes in waves and you shouldn't try to achieve it for every single second of every single day so uh, if I would say give a life lesson I would say learn to be not happy sometimes I think it's really important if you can deal with being not happy Length, oh. not happy. Exactly, and then the happiness, if you try to create a, a, the most stable situation you can live in, then the happiness will come by itself sometimes and it will go like the wind as well, yeah. and then it will come back. Well, you remember the article I wrote in Akabo, the pursuit of happiness? I definitely did, I wrote, also wrote a paragraph for it, so yes. Yes, that's uh, so, well, I guess we should think you on that. Exactly, yeah, I know, I, I remembered, I called uh, happiness uh, the illness of our time, or I didn't call it the illness of our time, but uh, the um, Dirk de Wachter called it, uh, the Belgian psychiatrist called it the, the illness of our time. And I, I think happiness is really important, but trying to be always happy is, is not a good thing to do, because it's just not possible, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a very young man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you live a very long, successful life. But Thank you very much. Uh, when you die, what would you want the world to remember you from? Oh, I think I want to be remembered. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I think I would love to be remembered just as a sweet and loving and loved person. Um, and I n noticed that hey. I lived a big part of my life trying to live as the person how I want to be remembered but for other people that do that as well I want to say watch out with that because if you only live life by how you would love to be remembered then sometimes you forget the importance of living in the moment and you forget the importance of the spontaneity of the life situation you're in right now so try to always find a balance because both things are important for your your mental health and also i once read that in a, from a research that 70 years after your death on average there's n almost no one that remembers who you are not even your family so if you only live life by how you want to be remembered then well it's maybe for 70 years but after that which is a blink in time uh, and after that you won't be remembered anyway so also don't forget to enjoy your life from time to time as well, okay. well that's a good, uh, advice. I want to show you something oh, yeah. we, we ended up at one of my favorite buildings in Leiden it's the faculty of law now it wasn't always the faculty of law it was the Kamerling honors lab mm -hmm. and I have a lovely story about this building Kamerling Honors was one of the leading physicists, here we have a breath of him, uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, around, 19, around the 1900s. And a young student that just graduated from his physics study in Zurich wrote a letter to be his assistant. He says, Kamerling Honors, can I be your assistant? You're the leading physicist and I want to learn from you. And Kamerling Honors denied because he said, I don't know you, just make a name for yourself in the world and I don't know if you can do anything and I don't want to, well, <laughs> spend my time on you. And that physicist turned out to be Albert Einstein. Really? So, uh, 
later on it all worked out and Einstein came here about for a certain period of time every year for a month to give guest lectures in this building and um, Kamerling Onnes is the one that came closest to the absolute zero which is the lowest temperature you can or actually cannot achieve and um, so one time in on earth uh, it was the 10th of July 1908 in this building was the coldest place on earth and also he was busy with achieving well coming close to the absolute zero and for that you need pumps to pump out the uh, the temperature you could say uh, because temperature are moving particles so you need pumps to put that yeah no make the particles static and for that you need pumps which gives a lot of vibration while somewhere else in the building someone was trying to invent the cardiogram you know the thing that mm -hmm. measures your heart a beep 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 and of course for that you need to measure tiny vibrations and you can't have pumps in the same building <laughs> destroying your measurements so they got into a big fight and this man has to, had to came in and he said okay Kamerling Onish you can work with your pumps until let's say seven o'clock and then after that it's his time to work on his cardi cardiogram and so the cardiogram the thing that are is present in every hospital that measures her, your heart is also um, invented in this building so it's an it's a building full of history and now the law students t took over uh, but okay, they can have it. Um, yeah, Leiden is the oldest university in uh, has the oldest university in the Netherlands, and I think this is just a, a beautiful example uh, with of, of a building with a beautiful history. Wow, that's amazing. It is. It it's is. A lovely story. I think uh, Leiden, Leiden is a city with so much history and so much, uh, and we have Leiden to thank for a lot of the advancements in technology that we have. In the world. Definitely, I would advise everyone to come here and just walk around, stroll around the city, and you can see for yourself. So yeah. Okay. Uh, any other things you would like to share? Uh, I do not have at this moment. I hope everyone will go to Ecabo to read all the other interviews that will come, and also read all the articles that you, Victor, and I write on the site. And uh, yeah, I think what we are doing is uh, it's good to bring people together and educating them. So yeah. Great. Well, I guess we've come to the end of the first episode of One on One. It my was a good pleasure. one. It was my pleasure. Thank you I very much. The first person to uh, talk to. I Thank you very much. We can uh, grow the website into something very special and very meaningful. I future. hope as well. Um, well, thank you very much again. No problem. And. Uh, now we can stop the video and have a lovely walk around Leiden. Uh, We're going to do that. All right, man. Okay, bye. bye.